When we first introduced integration, we did so with the idea of finding the area underneath the graph between two specific points, a start point and an end point, and we found that that area, assuming it was positive, would equal the integral of our formula for the function because that's parallel to the sum of some fx's times delta x's, our little rectangles. And that was great. That gave us the idea of what the meaning of this integral was. However, then we changed gears a little bit and asked how would we evaluate this? So this is what it is, but when it comes to evaluating and saying what's the number that goes with this, we ended up having to compute antiderivatives. And if that's the case, well, that was the hard part. The subbing in the a and the b is pretty straightforward, but how do we go from this little f of x to its antiderivative big F? Well, that's a complicated operation, and it's one we're interested in now for its own sake as the hard part of a longer process. And so what we're going to do is define a new kind of integration where there's no a and b, those are absent completely, and what we're going to get is just the antiderivative. So everything we did before except the b and a subbing in step. And that's what's called the indefinite integral, with this one here being called definite because there's a definite interval we're integrating over. So as a terminology thing, this indefinite integral is closely related in ideas to the definite integral, but it's a little different form when we get done with it. So the definite integral has the form with the limits here, that's important, the a and the b, and it represents an area between x equals a and x equals b, or it represents an accumulation, some specific amount of, uh, of a total change, It's a quantity. It's a number. We contrast that with the antiderivative coming from the indefinite integral, which simply represents, as I just said, the antiderivative of little f of x. When we do not have an a and a b at the top and bottom here, we're just asking for the antiderivative, and its value is simply a function. And actually, get a little more specific here, it's a family of functions, plural. And the idea being it's our f of x equals blah, 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 plus a constant. So in these particular integrals here, we don't need the plus c. And why? Because we always got, we always get plus c and then minus plus c again, and they always cancel. When we do the indefinite integral, we're going to need the plus c, it's going to be required. So a subtle little difference there. In terms of practice, how you do these things, well, if you see an integral like this, you're gonna to want to find the antiderivative, which is this idea. We're just gonna maybe write it a bit differently, with the main difference being we don't need the plus c, we can put it in if we like, but it's gonna cancel down here if we're just being asked, hey, what's the antiderivative of this function you've been given? It'll be blah, 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 antiderivative plus a possible constant at the end. Let's take a quick look at an example where we look at this indefinite integral. So our first one officially where there's no limits of integration. Here and here it's blank. And so what we're doing here is being basically asked for the antiderivative of t to the one half minus 3t to the negative 1 half dt, brackets around all that to go with the dt's, and all we are doing is finding the antiderivative of this. When we do so, we use the power rule for both of these because it's t to some fixed power, so we add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, the 3 out front stays the same, add 1 to the power, and divide by the new power, and we do not forget the plus c at the end. And I think it behooves us to tidy this a little bit. Over 3 halves is like multiplying by 2 thirds. 
dividing by half is like multiplying by 2, and we could write it like that if we liked, plus the c. So this is essentially the same questions we were doing earlier, except we just stop at this point. We don't sub in any values. So that's the main illustrative difference between an indefinite integral, where there's no limits, versus what we were doing earlier, which was definite integrals computing exact areas or exact uh, amounts of change.